I am stuck there. Yeah, no problem. It will. I be... have to work on it. Yeah, it will become better with meditation. Good. Yeah. Great. In fact, I have my feet soaking right now. They're swollen, so I'm hoping this really helps. <laughs> You are already doing the food soak, is it? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> nice, nice. Nice. <clears throat> we have uh, more participants. Yelena, Baljeet, Jenny. Hello. And we have today's meditation lead also with us. Uh, Sister Fani. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Rahul Jai Mataji. Jai uh, can you turn on your video? Yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we still have time and uh, participants are joining. So yeah, I was trying to know how is uh, their meditation going at home. Wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> Jason, uh, I think uh, you are joining uh, first time to the food soak. Is there anyone? Yes, thank you. Uh, so just let us know if, if this is your first time in the food soak uh, in the side room, then uh, we'll, we'll explain the food soak uh, and uh, yeah, uh, in detail. Uh, yes, it's, it's actually my first time. Can you explain that? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll take it. Yeah. Hello, Jenny. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Feeling thoughtless. Wow. Nice. Already. <laughs> Good, good. Yeah. Hello, Baljeet. Jai Shri Mataji, Rahul Ji. Jai Shri Mataji. How are you doing? I'm doing good, Rahul Ji. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, good, good to hear from you. <clears throat> okay. Same um, here. Yeah. I look forward for uh, this morning. And it is like waiting whole week for this, um, this time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the same, the same with me. Yeah, okay, meeting so the nice. nice group. It's, it's uh, really grateful to all of you. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll now hand over to today's meditation lead, uh, Sister Fani. You can... Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. Um, so did we have anyone who is new to food soak or new to taking bandhan? Okay, maybe not. So everybody has experience with food soak, and then you also, I'm assuming, know how to take a bandhan. No, uh, I think Jason raised his hand, so he's uh, he will be doing it first time. Food soak. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so while we are talking, if you can get a tub, uh, like a small tub that can fit your feet up to your ankle uh, filled with water you can you can get a handful of salt and um, a small rinse uh, mug with fresh water to rinse your feet and towel to dry your feet that will be great if you uh, want to go ahead and get the tub and the water and the salt
Okay, perfect. Yeah, it doesn't have to be really hot. Uh, you can make it lukewarm or a little bit on the warmer side. Um, it, it, it doesn't have to be hot. <laughs> And you have the steps here, uh, the Rahul has put up. Awesome. So um, I'll just get started with my uh, introduction, a little bit introduction about myself. And um, before 10 o'clock, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and then at 10 uh, we'll get started with the food soup so my name is uh, Fani Adabala and I am dialing in from Columbus Ohio where I have been living for the past 25 years um, and uh, I uh, got my realization before I moved to US back in India when I was a student. And so it's been a very uh, fulfilling journey for me so far, um, all the way back to uh, being a student, being married, being a mother. Um, now the kids are uh, about to become adults themselves so it's been a very fulfilling experience all these years and such has been um, my guiding light in every aspect and i'm extremely grateful for encountering sahaj at such a young light stage in my life and um so i've been fortunate to see Sri Mataji a couple of times. My first time when I saw mother Sri Mataji uh, was in India and that is within a year after I got my realization and uh, I was still a student and it's uh, beyond words the experience uh, the magnitude of her personality just the uh, just her presence uh, undoubtedly takes you into a different realm even though you are it seems the same on the you know a materialistic level or on three or five senses it seems like it's the same uh, but when i was in her presence uh, was differently transported to another realm which only the spirit can understand and uh, sorry I'm sniffling this body excuse me so uh, I feel like my time uh, with Sri Mataji when I met her when I actually attended um, the programs with her is my blessing and uh, it seems surreal at times to think that I have lived through those moments. Uh, yeah, so extremely and eternally grateful. That is a little bit about me. Uh, anybody want to uh, have any questions uh, before we start? And uh, today's topic uh is a very deep topic something that i'm beginning to scratch the surface myself uh, the life of lord buddha for us to appreciate and understand and imbibe sahaj yoga it's extremely important to understand what incarnations before uh, Shri Mataji um, have gone through what they have showed 
uh, through their life on this earth and how they have opened the door each one has opened the door for us to be right be here right now at a stage where we can experience that oneness with our spirit and oneness with the all-pervading energy with such ease um so yeah i don't know if i can do justice to this topic of desires and ego uh, which um lord the life you know lord buddha has shown through his life uh Shumataji, the talk that uh, we will hear in today's um uh, session Shumataji is very uh you know very simply very subtly indicates the magnitude of work that he had done in our spiritual ascent um so I, I think it's Shumataji's talk will set the stage for us and then um, we can talk about desires and ego and their role in our spiritual ascent. Okay, we are about time. We can get started with foot soak. I hope everybody is ready with their tub, with salt, a rinse mug, and uh, anybody who uh, is new to taking a bandhan. I hope everybody knows how to take a bandhan. If not, you can raise your hand. All right, so we can get started. And I'm assuming that you already have put the salt in the water. If you did not, you can put a handful of salt in your water. We can now begin our food soap meditation let's all close our eyes And ask a simple question, where is my attention? Genuinely, it's a conversation with our own self, with complete honesty. Let's observe where is our attention? Keenly observe your attention. If your attention slowly settle down, 
in your spirit in your heart or in your soul strong just when you pay attention to it that's a really good sign for those of you if your attention is still like you know it's like a jumping frog or a jumping monkey even when you try to pay attention it's always like one time here one time there if it's still if you find yourself in that state bring it to your spirit slowly or the right way would be to allow it to come to your spirit for some it may take time like a little child but just let allow your spirit your attention to come to your spirit and then recognize your spirit because that is the reality and ask yourself what's your spirit what is the state of your spirit now it is just witnessing just observing you and everything around you let's put our right hand on our heart to feel the presence of that spirit and that we are the attention becomes one with the presence of the spirit and that we are and that is self realization recognizing the presence of our spirit and becoming one with the spirit in our attention is self realization and witnessing ourselves this body this mind and everything around us is self realization with gratitude for the state of self realization with gratitude towards our guru shri mata ji who bestowed upon us this blissful state with such ease and gratitude to our mother kundalini 
for allowing us to feel the presence of our spirit. Let us invite her to our crown chakra, the top of the head, to the seventh energy center by using our hands as a gesture of invitation to our mother Kundalini. We'll move our hands, right hand over the left hand, to the roots of the energy center, inviting her, using our left hand as a desire. Let's bring it her, invite her to the top of her head and tie it with a knot with the all pervading energy. First knot. Bring your hands down. The second one. Let's invite the Mother Kundalini with all our attention. We can only ask, it is she who moves. Let's tie two knots of our desire power with the will of God. Third time. Three knots. With these three knots, our attention, our mother Kundalini, and the, our spirit become one with the source that created us, the all pervading power of divine love. Let's move our right hand over our head, giving ourselves a protective shield of Bandhan with the vibrations flowing in our hands. So no negative thoughts, no disturbances will come to us in this meditation that we are protected in the shield of love. So we can experience complete oneness. Let's give this shield of Bandhan seven times from left to right over the head and right to left over the head. Let's observe our state. Observe the presence of vibrations on our hands and the top of the head. If you don't, it's completely okay. But if you do, let's express gratitude. for the presence of this divine love on our central nervous system. With that, we'll open, we'll vibrate, move our right hand over the water seven times. And with this prayer, Mother Kundalini, please make this water as powerful as the ocean, so it's able to deeply cleanse all my chakras 
and tunnels. With that, we'll put both our feet in the water. Now that we are connected to the source of divine love, we'll pray to that source of love to cleanse our chakras and channels in this foot soak. And we'll begin that with our left channel using the element of earth and fire if you have the candle in front of you. Our goal is to recognize the presence of the earth element in ourselves, in the salt water, all around us. And recognize the element of fire through the light of the candle and the presence of a fire, the subtle essence of fire inside us. Mother Kundalini, please cleanse my Ida Nadi, the left channel, the left sympathetic system, of all the imbalances, negative energy flow, negative emotions, negative thoughts and all the memories and effects of past experiences. We'll desire for all this negative energy in our left sympathetic nervous system, the left channel, entire left side of the body and the right side of the head to go into the water. Mother Kundalini, please cleanse us deeply. Releasing this negative energy from every cell, every nerve of our being. Let's open ourselves, open our attention. So Mother Kundalini can work on our left side in complete freedom. Mother Kundalini, please fill my left channel with a pure desire to know my spirit, to be the spirit and to manifest the beautiful qualities of my spirit.
will now observe our left hand and the right hand which is towards the mother earth see what you're feeling on our fingertips the center of the palm on both the hands We'll put our right hand now on our left side of the neck. Turn our head to the right. And just release all the guilt that is still sitting in our left channel. Pressurizing our left side of the nervous system. Let's intentionally Release all the guilt from the past. I'm not this guilt. I'm not guilty at all. In this moment, right now, I am the pure spirit. Nothing but the spirit. I'm a valuable part of the whole. I'm a part and parcel of the whole. I'm part of the play. I'm not guilty. I'm not guilty at all. Let's release all the guilt and free up our left side completely by standing firm on the nature of our spirit and negating everything that is not the spirit. I'm not this guilt. I'm not guilty at all. Bring our right hand back on our lap. Cleanse the right channel. Left hand towards the ether. Right hand on our lap. Attention on the top of our head and the entire right channel. And the presence of the ether element above all around us. Let us release all the heat, all the worries, all the anxiety about the future into the ether. With complete awareness that we do nothing. It is the divine who does everything. So let us recognize that truth. And with humility, surrender to that truth. Knowing that the divine who does everything is nothing but love. That we are in the protection and the attention of this loving power of God. So let's free ourselves from all worries, anxiety, 
about the future. Father Kundalini, please cleanse my right channel of all the heat from the overactivity and too much thinking and the mental activity. Please remove all this heat into the ether and cool down every cell every nerve of my right channel let's observe our fingertips center of the palm on both the hands Bring our left hand back on our lap, both hands back on our lap. Attention on the center channel. Mother Kundalini. Please cleanse my center channel Please remove all the imbalances in all the chakras along this path of my spiritual ascent along this path of inner transformation, along this path of manifesting the qualities of my spirit. Let's experience this silence that our mother Kundalini is taking us into. Let's give her the promise. Mother Kundalini, I desire Nothing but my ascent to the state of being the spirit completely and the oneness with the source that created us. Mother, you please cleanse this path and remove all imbalances in all our chakras and channels, in the entire nervous system. Let's observe the state, the silence in our mind.
presence of our mother kundalini and our sahasrara of our gratitude to her for this deep cleansing and the silence and the oneness with that gratitude in our hearts let's rinse our feet to conclude this food soak We can now move on to the topic, today's topic of desires and ego, the life of Lord Buddha. As we listen in Sri Madhiji's talk, Buddha has, through his seeking, found out that it's the desires that cause all misery to human beings. So, who is the one desiring, if we ask the question, who is the one desiring? It is the I. It is the identification with this I-ness. The me, the I. Everything but the spirit and that's nothing but our ego so once we recognize that the i-ness and the ego is the cause of all desires and we identify try to identify more with our spirit, slowly we will recognize the, that we are not the ego. When, we, when the light of that spirit gives us this awareness that this ego is a myth then all the desires surrounding the ego drop off because they're insignificant at that time 
the desires hang on to this I-ness. Once that light of the spirit shines within us, the only desire that remains after we disidentify ourselves with the ego is the pure desire, is the desire of the spirit. Once we recognize that there is only one desire for the spirit and that is to be one with the souls that created us, the all-pervading power, and all other desires are of the ego, which is a myth. And that's why our desires are non-shashiable at all. The moment one desire is fulfilled, another one comes, another one comes, another one comes. And we cannot be certain what our desires will be or how they change because they are driven by this unreal ego, which is an illusion. If we start identifying ourselves with this illusion of ego, there is no way we can control our desires, no way we can overcome our desires, or no way we can give up our desires, because it's driven by this illusion of ego. And so, as Srimadhiji tells in her speech, that Buddha started to find out what is the cause for all misery. And he comes to the conclusion that it is the desires. With, so he has to have walked through a really hard, hard path to find that out and to get his self-realization by the grace of the all-pervading divine energy, he was able to get his self-realization at the end of all his search. When he gave up all his identifications, attachments, everything that belongs to him, including his hair, and his, the, his clothing and his family and his kingdom and everything to ultimately realize that he is the spirit to get his self-realization. If we put that into perspective, the way we got our self-realization or the first awareness that we are the spirit, not just the awareness, but the experience that we are the spirit with such ease, without having to give up anything to get our self-realization and the experience of self-realization. It's very humbling that we are able to attain what the disciples of Lord Buddha, having given up everything, were not able to attain. So then it's very humbling for us to, it becomes very humbling for us to respect our self-realization and do our part in manifesting that spirit that we become. So the difference between the life of Buddha and the life of Sahaja Yogis or even the disciples of Buddha is that they had to give up everything to walk in the path of self-realization regardless of whether they were able to achieve their self-realization or not. 
here we are given the knowledge of the spirit the experience of our spirit which is these vibrations either hot or cold warm or cool either one is an experience of our spirit on our central nervous system we are given self-realization one thing we have to remember is that for us to manifest our spirit and to be the spirit we have to give up our attachments not on the outside but inside in our awareness in our mind we have to negate all attachments every single day every single moment to be the buddha to be the self-realized and that is the difference and also the challenge because the devotees of buddha have to do that once and then they are on the path but we have to be aware of that every moment that we are buddha which means that we are self-realized and that means negating everything that is not the spirit not physically giving up but being aware that everything is an illusion so with that we will play shrimataji's talk and then we will make it for a few minutes Today is a great day to come to Brighton because it's the day of Buddha's birth. Today is Buddha's birthday, Lord Buddha's birthday. You all have heard about his birth and that his mother dreamt of an elephant, of a large white elephant before the birth of Buddha. And then it was predicted that a child will be born in your family who will be either a great saint or a very great king, as in Sanskrit called Chakravarti. He is the one who is the ruler of the whole world. So the father got worried and he thought he must get the son involved into the family life, into material life and give him all the pleasures of life. So he built a very special place for him, beautiful palace to live in. And where he got married to a girl called Ishodra, was a very, very beautiful woman, gave him all the pleasures of life, everything that he could do to entice this boy away from asceticism. Also, you know the story of his boy. One day on the road, how he found three types of people and how he felt that why a person should become old, why should a person suffer in life and why should people die. So all these three things put an inquiry into himself and he started a trying to understand why these things happen to human beings. With this, the inquiry start. So, uh, he reached 
point where he could not bear any more the comforts and the all the attachments that were entangled around him by his father. He had a son whose name was Rahul, and he left the son and the wife in the search of the truth. Now, he started from a wrong end, I should say, for the search of the truth, because he wanted to know why there are miseries in the human beings. And so he started from collecting towards the set. When we see miseries all around us, many people have seen, they say, what about others? Will everybody get realization? Will everybody will have this? You see, this comes from the wrong end, I feel, because first of all, we must know, are we all right? Have we, are we perfect? Are we full of joy? Have we received the absolute knowledge? If you start from this point, it's always better. Because he started from the wrong point, searching it from the collective, to remove the miseries of the people, he had to go in a very roundabout. So he read all the books and Vedas and this, he went to big pandits, to all the great knowledgeable people to meet them, to ask them the answer, why there are these three things. That is, the yoga is the health or miserable physical body, then the death and the old age. Went and asked so many people and they said, you have to die because you are born. And then they said that you have to become old because you are born like that and you have to suffer because you commit sins. He was not satisfied with the answer. So he went on searching and searching and searching. And then he got tired, absolutely fed up. Then he went to a place called Gaya, very near Patna, it is. I have seen the place and the tree. And he sat under a banyan tree where he slept off because he got so tired of his sleep. And after the sleep he got up and suddenly he got his realization and he thought the whole drama is over. Now his mother herself was Adi Shakti, gave him the birth and she died just after the birth of the child. And he got this realization. Now, at that time, when he got his realization, there was nobody to tell him what it is, that what it means, realization is, nobody to decode or talk about anything that was to be understood by him. But because of his tremendous seeking and such ardent desire that the Shuddha Icha, the Kudalini itself, rose. But of course, the Adi Shakti blessed him and he got his realization under the bunny entry. Now, any incarnation which came on this earth had to Samayacha according to the time. The need of the time had to act, firstly. Secondly, the need of the incarnation to come on this earth was first created in the human being. So, supposing 
at a time when there was too much of ritualism, Brahminism or priesthood and people were trying to take everything onto those artificial rituals and all that. An incarnation had to come on this earth to correct those ideas. Like Krishna came at a time when He said, this is all Leela, Puja and everything He cancelled, nothing to it, no Puja, nothing. You just have Ras, enjoy yourself. It's all in your Puja, you see. So He brought that concept at that time in the awareness of people that the whole world is a Leela, is a play of God's own whims. So you just enjoy it. And that's how He created this uh, wonderful festival of Holi, which we had in Delhi. I don't know, any one of you who was there for the Holi? No. You were there? Two years back. No, but this time you were not there. All right. You might get the pictures of that. All right. So in the same way, when Buddha came in, first problem was that he thought that it's better not to talk about God. Because in his search, everybody told him the answer was, Oh, it's God who does it. He punishes you. It's God who gives you this old age. It's God who does it. But what is this God after all? Why does he do it? He said, You better ask the God. Where is the God? So everybody put every blame on God as usual. Even that's not good. Nothing so new. <laughs> and nothing unusual, I should say. So this must be done by God. <laughs> if you cut your throat, God put my knife in my hand and He cut my throat. <laughs> so you see, He thought better not talk of God. Because everybody is going towards God. Then the people whom He met, they said, Now I have become God. He said, How? He said, I am God. Oh, what? Why? Because He could mesmerize people. He said, I have become God. Just imagine. So He thought that is very dangerous to talk of God because people take God in the hand and use it for their own purpose. Always say, Oh, this is what the God has to do, and it's God has done it, and I'm in connection with God, and I'll tell God. So he got a fright, and he said, I'd better not talk about God, because that puts the attention of the people on ritualism, artificial things, they're building temples after temples, and just doing all these horrible things which one should not do. Like if you go to the south, you'll find the in the temples, they shave their heads of the leaves, they shave it completely. And that they have to, they all cobbled on all the sides of the wall, walls of the temple. And the ladies who shave their head are just rolling along the sides. You see, they have to do it sometimes, one thousand and eight times, rolling magic. And the water is poured on them. God knows what is the ritual from where it has come. So the poor women go on rolling, rolling, rolling like that, and somebody is pouring water on them all the time, buckets after buckets. <laughs> the husband and the brother and all, they bring one after another. You see, one is finished and another one is rolling. He's rolling like that on that muddy, uh, sort of a cobbled area. I mean, I was shocked when I saw this. I was it. And then later on, you see, they became modern. So they started selling the hair, you see, abroad. So the whole thing became a big industry in Madras, you see. The hair was made into this bouffant and all that you turn it to say. <laughs> so it's I mean in the name of God, ridiculous things were done. Ridiculous things were done. So he just thought better not talk about God. The first step is self realization. He was a great Sahaja Yogi, I must say. Because he said, nothing doing, don't talk about God or anything, first you get your Realization. That was the first condition. Establish it. Unless and until you have established your Realization, nothing doing. 
So he just started his own method of propagating buddhi, Buddha's knowledge, or you can Buddhism, as they call it. Of course, it became ism later on. So all that he started with the idea that people should first become Buddha. <clears throat> Buddha means realize. Buddha is to know. So Buddha means the person who has known, <coughs> means the one who is a realizer. So what he says, Buddham Sharanam Gacham. I bow, no, I surrender. Sharanam means I surrender to the Buddhas, means to all the Sajogis. You are all Buddhas because you know. When you know, you are the Buddha. Now, without going into all that nonsense of renunciation and shaving your head and wearing that dress and everything, you have achieved your realization. It's a short circuit or a short path. Why? Because he started from the other side. But if he had started directly from himself, you see, it would have been better. You see, in practical sense, I'll tell you how it is. Supposing you want to repair your house, so you have to have instrument for that house. But supposing you are worried about all the houses of the world and you start repair, neither you will repair other houses nor yours. So first you must practice on yourself. Put your attention to yourself. It also is a method by which you avoid seeing the point, seeing the reality, that if you are not all right, how can you improve, you improve the whole world? So when your attention goes to other things, you must know that there is something wrong with you first of all, which must be right. And that's why it took him so much time to go round and round and round. He had to give up his wife, give up his family, give up everything and get to realization. Because by giving up everything, he realized that it is he who should achieve. It's a very circuitous way. But you can just say it doesn't exist anything, first let me get all right. <coughs> That's so much. Let us bow to the presence of Sri Buddha. Let us bow to the presence of Sri Buddha in our right Ajna. And say, Mother Kundalini, please awaken Sri Lord Buddha in all of us. and give us the strength to become the Buddha. With our left hand on our right Agnya, which is the left side of the head, we will listen to Buddham Sharanam Gachami. If your hand hurts, you can bring it down whenever.
With our attention on our Sahasrara and our right hand on our Sahasrara, pressing the center of the palm, pressing the fontanel bone area with the center of the palm, our head bend forward. Let us express our gratitude for our self realization. Shri Mataji, thank you for giving us our self-realization, the knowledge of our spirit, the knowledge of the reality, Please strengthen our desire 
to be the spirit and please strengthen our attention so that it is always on our spirit. Please strengthen our yoga, the oneness with the source that created us, the power of the love of God. Let's raise our right hand inch by inch. Eight to ten inches above the top of your head. And then as far as you can take it, leave your left hand, right hand, fingers towards the sky. Bring your right hand back on your lap. Observe your state on both your hands, on your sarsapara, the crown chakra, Now we can conclude this meditation by raising our Kundalini and giving ourselves a bandha. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you for sharing your presence, your vibrations with all of us this morning. Thank you, Fani. Thank you, Rahul. God bless everyone. Thank you very much. It was a beautiful meditation. You're welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Auntie. Thank you, Fani. It was beautiful for me today. It was beautiful to be here with you all. Thank you, Rahul. Have a beautiful day. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Fanny. Thank you, everyone. Beautiful. Very needful. Very needed. <laughs> nice to see you, Elena. Nice to see you too, Fanny. <laughs>